Hello and welcome to the Ball and After. Emmett Ryan here from Ball and Europe, and this is the Irish edition of this week's show. We will have a Euro edition as well. We got a lot to get through. And this episode just has ministerial disregard for all of you. Uh, we're going to get to that big story. Obviously, great column by Keith Duggan, feeding off a broader point around what uh, the letter Irish uh, basketball, basketball Ireland, even sorry, sent to all those running in the election recently had here in Ireland. But before that, we are going to deal with some happy things first. You know, people doing basketball stuff on the actual court, because that's one of the things we cover in this show. So to kick things off, we of course had a 50 burger in the weekend. Delaney Blaylock for Belfast Star was there in UCD and Star kept alive in the title race. Like, and it was a kind of a weird one though. I was watching it with my buddy Ed and Declan beside me, and we're kind of going, oh yeah, he's having a good game, he's scoring a lot. And I'll be honest, it was pretty late when we realized just how much he'd actually put up because, you know, you don't have live stats during the game. I was like, oh, he scored a lot, he scored a lot, but you're not thinking 50 burger. And then it's like, you know, we hear Paul Meany on the PA and he's now on 47 points and we kind of look at each other and he's on what? And, you know, keep an eye on the time, it's possible. Gets to the line at 48, makes them both. It's like, we got a 50 point game! It was incredible. So uh, it was crazy for us to watch. It was crazy for Delaney as a player. So we're going to hear first from Delaney Blaylock himself after the game. And then we'll hear from the Belfast star coach, Adrian Fulton. <laughs> it feels good though. It feels good to even win. And like, you looked really relaxed out there because like, we were keeping a bit of track of the scores. We're like, going to get beside me. Hang on, Delaney's like in the late 40s now. And like, we sort of came out of nowhere for us. Was it like that for you? I mean, I just had to come down and just, uh, just play hard for my team. It was, it's really about wins. It's really not even about the 50 points. But I just wanted, wanted to win. And like, you guys, you were, you know, struggling for the first half. Like, you were crawling back, crawling back. What's it mean for you to get this W and stay in a title race? It feels good. It feels good to be uh, number one right now. So. <laughs> it feels good though. It feels really good. Uh, are, are you going to celebrate tonight though? Because 50 points in the game isn't that often for any player. Well, we still got more games to go. So once we win the league, then I'll celebrate. And, uh, and obviously it was being streamed live tonight. Was any of your family watching, do you know? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Well, hopefully they're able to watch back if they didn't. Yay! Oh, yeah! <laughs> All right, you know, well, we got a good start to the third quarter. Um, Choice words at half time probably uh, probably helped, um, and they responded really well. You know, they usually were terrific tonight. They played really well. Um, obviously, they were down. Mike Garrow, who's a terrific player, and um, we obviously one of our focuses this week was to try to check out stop Mike Garrow. And then uh, obviously Mike was unable to play, um, but Jimmy Muldowney, for a young player to step up and play the way he did, um, he, he's got a really bright future. Um, Scott Kinnaman still getting it done. Barry shot the ball well in the first half. You know, Mark and Vincent, Dean Vance, they're, they're really good. Because um, uh, normally when I'm talking to you about young talents, it's your son. What was it like for you seeing Jamie out there tonight looking really good? Well, no, listen, I mean, I know he can play, you know, and, and, and it was as if that he, he sneaked up on us. Um, and we look at our scouting report and he's absolutely in there. Um, he can flat out shoot the ball. Um, but obviously Delaney, Delaney was super, super, I think at 50 tonight he was superb. And CJ was brilliant, you know, he, he was really good all game. He, he really got his, uh, he kept us going. So yeah, we're thrilled. Very difficult place to win. Now you've had Delaney for the whole season. Like, we just got a shower with him there. Like were you expecting a 50 burger from him at some point this season? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously he got hurt early in the year. He, he, he missed about five or six weeks with a fractured patella. Um, we, we knew the player we were getting. I mean, he played really good level division two. Um, he's so talented, great guy. Um, he fits in really well with the team. And as I said a few weeks ago, he's, he's almost the perfect American for this league because he can uh, he can guard lots of positions, he can play multiple positions, he can shoot, he can rebound. Uh, he's, 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 uh, he's a hell of a player. So that was Delaney Blaylock and Adrian Fulton of Belfast Star. That win keeps Belfast one game behind Tralee Warriors in the title race. Tralee obviously with the win themselves at the weekend over Mike Cullen on the road. And uh, Tralee with a big Kerry Derby this weekend against Calorglin, the uh, smaller village looking to take down the bigger town in the uh, sort of upset mode here with the title race. Still, still in the balance. Tralee, of course, you know, they don't leave Munster again this season, so that's a little bit in their favour in terms of travel. Belfast have a tough one against Aina, which, uh, that, that's that's a tricky one, because Aina finally kind of got their rhythm back last week with their big W. So you're sort of looking at that and kind of going, this this could be a bigger weekend than we're all thinking in the Super League, I think, you know, and it's a pretty big one. Unfortunately, I won't be at any of the men's games in person, by the way, this weekend, uh, because or women's games, in fact, either, unfortunately. Uh, basically, because of my schedule, uh, producing the magazine for my day job and work connected with the business post, and please do buy that, it does help. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, so I will be watching games obviously online on TV. Just the way the schedule works, getting summer in person this weekend isn't ideal. We're going to also now talk about the men's Division 1 because of course the promotion race is nearly, nearly at a close. Killarney are still technically alive, but they know it's no longer in their hands and it hasn't been for a couple of weeks because Balancolic are one win away or one Killarney defeat away from going up to the Super League for the first time in club history. They had a huge win over Talca Rovers on the road here in Dublin at the weekend and I caught up with their coach Kieran O'Sullivan after the game. Well, we've got one game to win out of, out of our next four matches, so um, next Saturday is our focus um, you know, against Ligo. It's a home game, so you'd assume Killarney are winning right now, I think they are, so you know, we, we can't wait for next Saturday. We've been waiting for this for three years and um, you know, I think we're going to get our just desserts and, and play in the Super League and I think teams are looking forward to playing against this as well. And like for you guys, like this year you've gone without a loss, like how important has it been to just be this perfect, like to ensure you leave no doubt? Um, yeah, I think it's taken away a bit of stress, even though early on the year we've had a lot of um, injuries and, you know, so we really have had an, an up and down year, you know, but in terms of getting the right for game and being effective at the game situations, we've been, um, the, the lads have been fantastic all year, you know, hats off. And like lastly, if you get over the line, assuming you do, what would it mean to bring Super League basketball to Cabal and Colic? Well, the last team that were Super League were, were the team I played with down the last 25 years ago, so it's, it's, it's too long for uh, another club to have a Super League team. You know, we've been at the top tier of Dubai basketball for the last 10 years and, you know, we're getting our just desserts now hopefully next week to be Super League. So yeah, like Balancolic with the odd bit of history, of course, you've got three straight Division 1 Cups, which they would totally settle for having the one Division 1 Cup and having gone straight up. But, uh, you know, it'd be kind of... I think, finally, finally, they're getting over the line. There's an awful lot of O'Sullivan's in that club, uh, if anything, for my Twitter. Is there anything to go by? And by the way, of course, thanks to all of you, we have broken 10,000 Twitter followers. Woohoo! Now, just to get the YouTube up so we can start broadcasting live again, that's the main reason I keep going, please subscribe, please tell your friends to subscribe, because we've got to get a lot more than we have so we can actually do live YouTube again. It's very annoying. Uh, the restrictions are in place with very good security reasons in mind, yada, 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 but they're just annoying for me personally and for what we can do for you. Uh, so, moving on to the women. Women's League, where we had, uh, well, wins where it mattered. Mary got their W, DC Mercy got their W, and that means we have, a, well, a clinching scenario in place. So should DC Mercy win at Brunel and Mary lose at home to Colester, then DC Mercy are crown champions next weekend, no matter what. However, Mary win, it goes at least one more week, and possibly two, because we get to that, don't worry. And as an entirely biased person, I can't go to games this weekend. I can go to games next weekend. And Mary come to DCU Mercy in a game where if DCU Mercy win, they're crown champions. If Mary win, goes to the final week. This is a show which is going to be about balance, about even-handedness, and in no way about favouritism. Mary, please don't lose this week. I want that game to matter. It's good. Okay, yeah, but seriously, hoping it, obviously for good games this weekend, even though I can't make it to them in person, but, like, if we could get that, like, sort of real clinching scenario type game in DCU, have a lot at stake. I mean, it's just great for the sport to have those sort of games so late in the season. Like, the one unfortunate thing with Belfast and Trilogy scenario right now is they've already had both their games against each other, so we don't get one more head-to-head -head in the run-in. Like, obviously, that's the way leagues go, but it just would be kind of cool if there was still one Belfast Trilogy game left. It was kind of that way the year ECD and Colester went for the title, like... Down the stretch, it was still like, oh, you know, uh, we got we got them in a playoff situation in the end. We may yet get that in the Super League in the men, don't get me wrong, but there was that buzz of there'd be that little bit of extra bite had they had one late on. Like, we even saw it last year with Trilly coming to UCD and all sorts of tiebreakers in play. Had UCD held on to win that, instead Trilly got the win and it was all, ooh, 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 it was really explosive. Great drama. I love me some drama. So now on to, yeah, the thing. The thing. The thing, and that is, of course, the small matter that Bernard O'Byrne, the uh, boss of Basketball Ireland, couldn't get a meeting by his own admission and claim with even the junior minister of sport, never mind the main minister, because a lot of people might go, well, that's roster for you, isn't it? Here's the thing. It's not. It's not just him. It's This is, like, you know, as Keith Duggan put beautifully in his piece, it's like, and also a sub-editor who might have actually written the headline, so just to make sure I'm not being, you know, too harsh on the, you know, too harsh, I'm not, you know, avoiding giving credit where it's due, because obviously he did a great piece, but in case the sub-editor can put the headline. Like, you know, the ministerial neglect line, beautifully put. But, uh, yeah, like, 
it's kind of crazy to me that, you know, there's that level of disregard for any sport in Ireland, never mind one of the scale of basketball. And just for context, like if, you know, Alan Orr of American Football Ireland said to me he had that, and I think no one watching this is going to think that American Football Ireland is on the same scale as Basketball Ireland. If Alan Orr came to me and said that, I'd go, you what? You can't get a meeting with him. They're not talking to you. And so that's, that's a level that really concerns me uh, because if you basically are a national governing body, the ministry is there to serve you, not the other way around. And yeah, that's that's a real concern. So I hope that after, of course, this, uh, this uh, came out after Basketball Ireland had published their letter uh, to all, and it said they were calling on all candidates in the election. And uh, for those who don't follow Irish politics, we're going to be waiting a while to find out what our government is. I do that uploading this video, admittedly at short notice, just to be safe, but we were in 70 days last time. 70 days. It could be longer this time, it really could. And that's uh, me going as far as I can to politics as I can. But yeah, so I think now is a good time if you are involved in the sport and you want to talk to the politician to do it because for all the talk you see in the news and all that about, uh, you know, busyness and trying to decide what government's being formed and yada, 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 the real story is most of them are involved. Most TDs, most outgoing senators, most potential senators are not involved in deciding what's going to be the government. And they could do with distractions. They could do with being pressured on other matters. And uh, helping to support out is a good one. And speaking of the Shannon, there's a whole lot of people who are going to be standing. Now, the easy ones to spot are, and the easy ones to influence, are those going on the NUI and TCD panels. If you happen to have certain views, I wouldn't think it's a bad idea to mention it to people who are seeking roles in those panels. Because, you know, elephants don't forget, baby. Speaking of that, Nelly's, of course, big chance with them at the weekend. Sorry, just it was too obvious. I had to find a way to break off there. Uh, yeah, that was terrible, terrible type of humour by me. So we finish off with a little bit more happiness, which is uh, the European Small Countries, which is coming up this summer, which is, of course, going to be in Limerick. And actually, it does link into the main story because we've got this big thing coming up in Limerick. We've got the U20 women playing in the A division in Europe. These are big stories we can tell in this sport, and we've got to tell our politicians that and that to help us tell these. And uh, ahead of the U20s, I had a chance back at the Men's Cup final to speak to Andreas Zaglis, uh, who was the Secretary General of FIBA. And here's Andreas uh, telling us why you should all be excited about the FIBA Small Countries Tournament. Well, it's always exciting when your national team plays home and it doesn't happen so often to organize a tournament that your, your national team will be competitive, has chances of uh, making it to the top. And at the same time, you get uh, very good talent from other countries being uh, Exhibit on the court. I think we will see great level organization. I have no doubt. We saw it tonight at the National Cup Finals. And at the same time, very exciting games. So for FIBA, the small countries division uh, championship is a championship that always attracts our, our attention. And uh, we do believe that we will see some uh, new stars coming out of this tournament as well. But we have a full interview with Andreas on the site. That is linked below. Also linked below is Keith Duggan's fantastic piece. And uh, is there anything else linked below? I don't recall right now. I don't think we've got anything else linked below, but what you couldn't do, though, what you should do, can do, can do, I don't know. Uh, you know I'm not really speaking English right now. Uh, what we could really do with help on, though, just before I go, is, of course, uh, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, all that. Buttons are around me. Please do that. Tell your friends. And I will see you soon.